Uh, I appreciate being here this morning. I hope I can add some insight to uh, the program. Uh, uh, as was mentioned, I'm going to talk about the internet and the challenges we face because certainly the internet has thrown a, a whole new wrench into the discussion of free speech and hate speech and the like. So I'm going to show you quite a few examples. Uh, I'm going to go by a little bit of historical uh, uh, material just to, to show you where this comes from, because many people, uh, many people think of the internet as the when the World Wide Web came along, but it, it started long before that. The internet is actually a system that was created in the 1960s, primarily on government hardware, uh, by uh, a uh, basically as a way for think tanks to communicate with each other, universities and others. Uh, and you know, went on that way for a long time before many more people started getting access and then it really got corrupted. So we've, uh, at the Simon Wiesenthal Center, we've now produced 12 CDs called Digital Terrorism and Hate. Uh, you've been uh, received, hopefully, the, the most recent one. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you just a little bit from that uh, towards the end and make sure you understand how it works. But, uh, we've been monitoring, as I said, this, this uh, subject since long before the web. Uh, I've been with the center now for 25 years, and really the, the uh, I think 24 of those we've been online looking at this type of material. Uh, early on, we had a variety of things. We had a, a, something called Internet Relay Chat, which is really uh, a real-time conference where people that could get online could have a conference, uh, those that had access to the net, uh, as far back as, as the mid-80s. Uh, utilized by extremists, we had the news groups and the, the Usenet groups, as they were known, uh, talking about everything. Again, those were primarily designed, for example, there was one called Alt Engineering Explosives, which was basically designed for uh, engineers to discuss various theories and so forth. Uh, but as time went on, more people got access to the internet, we started seeing people come on and say, I want to make a pipe bomb. Now, most people that saw that question, I, don't, I want to make a pipe bomb, would probably say, if he doesn't know how, I'm not going to tell him. But, of course, there's always one person on the internet that says, it's my right to free speech, so I'm going to tell him how to make a pipe bomb, and says, get your pipe, get your black powder, get your cotton, put it in this way, and you have yourself a pipe bomb. So not to be outdone, the next guy comes on, and this is a real uh, conversation that took place online. The next guy comes on and says, you know, but if you get this, this, and this, and you do it in this order, you'll have a better pipe bomb. So uh, it, it just progressed from there, and then we started getting, you know, everyone uh, using the, the, the news groups. As I said, mentioned bomb making and mayhem. Uh, and, you know, uh, at the time of Oklahoma City, there were any number of postings with the recipes for the, the ammonium nitrate bomb, although uh, you can go to the U.S. Farm Manual and find that because that type of bomb is used to take out tree stumps on farms. Uh, sarin gas was another one with the uh, same time as Oklahoma City. We had the Japanese uh, subway attack, and uh, you had to be a you know you had to be an engineer to understand what the uh, the formula was, but you could find that online as well. Chemical warfare, it, it's all out there. Uh, denial of the uh, Holocaust, which I'll also mention a little bit later. Uh, some of the postings, these are typical Usenet postings, uh, pre-World Wide Web. Uh, you see this one from Alt Skinheads talks about uh, the racial issues and using uh, all kinds of slurs and saying we need to take our country back from all these people, uh, et cetera. Just uh, one of, of hundreds or thousands that were posted. Lewis Beam actually is the one who had the idea to use the internet for uh, white supremacists and other extremists. He actually created a system called the Patriot Net on a single line BBS where one person at a time could call into these uh, someone's computer and, and leave and get messages and download propaganda and so forth. But what that did is it put extremists in good position to take advantage of uh, the web when it came along. And uh, Beam was a, a former uh, uh, soldier, served in Vietnam. 
Vietnam as a door gunner on a helicopter, came, came back and joined the Texas Emergency Reserve, which was a Klan group. He's been associated with Aryan Nations in Idaho, and it's kind of an oxymoron, but he's, committed, he's considered one of the smarter people in the white supremacy movement. Uh, we had early computer games. Uh, if anybody here remembers the old Commodore and Amiga computers, things like Aryan Test, Clean Germany, which interestingly enough, as Susan mentioned, uh, uses a metaphor. Clean Germany was one, it, you know, it came out during the, uh, uh, all the problems that they were having uh, in Germany in the early 1990s, and uh, it was kind of environmental. It was, you know, uh, clean up the environment, clean up our streets, clean up the, the, uh, uh, the immigrants and so forth and employed that metaphor. Uh, this is what some of those games look like. One of the more sophisticated ones was the next one called KZ Manager, which simulated a concentration camp. But their issue was not Jews in the early 90s, it was Turks. So your job here was to uh, buy and gas Turks and, and uh, uh, make more money. When the uh, Oklahoma City bombing also represents really the time that the World Wide Web came into, came into play. The web has only been around since late 94, early 95. And uh, uh, at the time we had, uh, in, in, in March of 1995, at the time of Oklahoma City bombing, we had one, front, one white uh, supremacy site called Stormfront, still online today. But uh, we saw individuals start looking at this, and as you see by this quote here, uh, it says, the rules of the game are changing rapidly and we must be the first to ma master this new dimension. This is what Stormfront looked like in 1995, their mission statement that uh, uh, it, it was a uh, forum for courageous men and women fighting to preserve their white Western culture and ideals of freedom of speech an association, a forum for planning strategies, and forming political and social groups to ensure victory. All these signs of battle and victory uh, run through all of these type of sites. Uh, this was actually put up online by Don Black, uh, a uh, uh, former member of the Klan who uh, was arrested with a group of his friends when they wanted to invade the island of Dominica in the Caribbean and take it over for a Klan training base. The government thought that that was probably a violation of our treaty status put Black in federal prison for a few years where he learned programming and then he came out and started Stormfront. Uh, the Stormfront Forum, just some of the interesting quotes from 1995, uh, our sword, our battleground, and the last one, you know, one guy posting an hour a day can do a lot better than 100 guys marching in the street. So they knew it right off. Stormfront these days is a is a is uh, mostly a forum. It has uh, uh, three years ago I, I did a check when I did a presentation. They had 95,000 members. As of yesterday morning, they had 193,000 members. Uh, and one time it, they had in one 24-hour period they had as many as 123,000 online. Uh, Traditional American haters such as Tom Metzger, White Aryan Resistance, started using the net, not only, not only uh, promoting hate, but uh, suggesting uh, domestic terrorism. You see by that start to, uh, start to resist or cease to exist. The white race is going to disappear unless you do something about it. Tom Metzger was never going to get caught firing the first shot in the race war, but he was certainly going to encourage others. Same thing with the Turner Diaries, uh, written by Dr. William Pierce, a former uh, physics professor at Oregon State University who gave up uh, uh, academia in the 60s uh, to start a white supremacy group. And uh, uh, he's actually the author of the Turner Diaries, Andrew McDonald, the Turner Diaries is a book about a race war that was used by numerous groups, uh, the order in the 1980s that went on a rampage around the Northwest, Timothy McVeigh, uh, uh, actually patterned the Oklahoma City bombing after a scene in the Turner Diaries where they take out the FBI building. Uh, hate rock was a big thing in the 90s. Uh, see some of the bands there. Uh, Rahoa, Racial Holy War, uh, Extreme Hatred, uh, use of the symbols such as the runic symbols and on the left side you see one of the sweethearts of the band uh, with a picture of Hitler and a swastika on his belly. 
Uh, but they started selling music over the net. This uh, uh, Resistance Records was the first one to do that back as early as like 1996. We had uh, the, also the promotion of lone wolf terrorism combined with the white supremacy. Uh, Alex Curtis was a uh, white supremacist in San Diego. Uh, he, was, he was pretty young in, in the uh, uh, early 90s. He was still a teenager and uh, he started getting connected through the internet with leading white supremacists around the country, promoting this idea of the lone wolf philosophy, the lone wolf terrorist, uh, where they, they will go out and, and surveil their target get their materials, attack their target, do so in secrecy so they can't be infiltrated and exposed. And uh, he had a mailing list of over 800 people online. Uh, unfortunately for him, he didn't take his own advice and he and three of his co cohorts were uh, arrested for uh, and trying to intimidate a Jewish congressman and threatening a Hispanic mayor in La Mesa, California, uh, and his friends rolled over on him. And he went to federal prison for three years. But it was important that he was a member of the internet generation, put this list of people together, uh, and uh, as I say, was eventually uh, arrested on hate crimes. Well, as we get closer to 9-11, we started to see uh, extremist groups actually uh, not being in league with, but uh, promoting some of the ideals that, that, uh, of, of terrorists and extremists, uh, such as this one, Aryan Action, which was was uh, organized in different states here in the southeast and uh, uh, essentially promoting al-Qaeda, saying that, you know, uh, smash, uh, support the Taliban, smash Zog or the Zionist occupation government. Uh, and, you know, if you're, not, uh, if you're not for us, you're against us, 